Good morning. I hope everyone's well, feeling good, wake up to a beautiful morning, ready to go. Amen. We're at worship. Amen. And we welcome you in the name of Christ. We're glad you're here. I want to make several announcements. I hope you'll look over the, the bulletin you have. If you look at the back there, you're going to see everything outreach. My goodness. All about the outreaching ministries of this church. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. Get out in the streets of Kerrville and do something for Jesus. Amen. And here it is. Outreach after outreach. Noel for neighbors. Christmas clothes drive. Buttons and bows and craft sales at Art Park. And we've got someone to tell you about that. Come on, get it in. Let's go. Uh, we want you to know all about this. So please uh, tell us, Deb. Hello, everyone. Um, as you all probably know by now, we, because of COVID, we decided to cancel the in house design. But I'm a firm believer that when God closes the door, he opens the window. Amen. Then we had the chance to become part of this art mart that's being done at the uh, Hill Country Arts Foundation. So we've decided to rent a table. Um, <laughs> according to the information we were originally given, it started on the 13th, but I have seen in the paper that it starts actually on the 14th, but it's sometime next week for sure, and it runs for six weeks. I'd love to see everyone come out. It's a safe environment. They're only gonna let a certain amount of people in at a time, and uh, it should be a safe place to shop. So I want you all to come out, support Buttons and Bows, and the uh, money that we usually take to uh, give to the local charities and bring lots and lots of friends. <laughs> I wanted to show you, and Curtis wanted me to show you some of the new things that we have this year. We have these darling little pillows that all have like a dog monkey. So if anyone wanted to get a gift for a dog lover, this is perfect. This one says, bed hog dog, which is <laughs> my now. We have a new set of placemats that are available for sale. But these actually have a napkin attached to them. So they're all done up for Christmas and they're fancy and they look like a present. Oh, can we show them that one? Yeah, These were donated to us. They came in when I wasn't here, so I'm not sure who donated them. But I know that this congregation has been incredibly generous when it comes to crafting for us and giving us donations. These are little trivet. They're done up on the back with um, vinyl. This one has a set of running horses and they're shaped like the state of Texas. And then the inside of them is wine quartz. I have to tell you, anytime we ask for wine quartz or wine bottles, the room fills up. <laughs> <laughs> we had boxes of these, so I was glad that someone was able to get some use from them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These were donated by uh, Gary Lewis, and actually they're bird feeders. And he's also provided us with some beautiful wooden crosses. And then there's Kitty and her decorated wine shells. We do plan to um, enhance the boutique probably over the next couple of weeks. So if you didn't want to go to the art mart, you'd be, you'd be um, able to shop here like you always do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for your generosity and your support. Thank you, Gary. Wow. That's going to be good. And, and, you know, we have so many different ones going on. Not only this, but what Catherine's involved in and all these you see on the back. I am really happy about all this. And God bless. May the blessing.
blessings of God be upon all of our outreach ministries, not only the, the good we do raising money, but the good that's done as we put that money on the road and we serve each other. Well, now, uh, I think there's an announcement I need to make that unless somebody is going to make this official announcement, it has to be very officially done two weeks prior to any congregational meeting. So I'm here to tell you, if I get to make the announcement now, listen up. We have a congregational meeting scheduled two weeks from now. And it's going to be right after the worship. We usually have a, a Thanksgiving dinner, but with the COVID shutting us down, we will not be having all that meal together. But we will have the congregational meeting to go over all of the items of business that the church needs to look at as we get ready for a new year. And you believe it, 2021. So please let this serve as the official announcement of that congregational meeting. We call ourselves to worship with the old 100, that beautiful song a magnificent piece. Shout for joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with songs of joy. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, dear God, for every assurance that we are your people. We come now graciously remembering all your benefits to us, all your blessings. We are piled so high, and we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts as we gather. We want to praise your name for all your goodness. Oh, be in our midst. Quicken each of our spirits to listen to your spirit as we worship. Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I stand if you're able as we sing praises to our Lord. And Sandy's over there. Great job. Yay.
and strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. That when we sleep, it was strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away.
Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servant. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Most gracious Lord, 
We send our bubbles to you today. We thank you for the joy in our hearts, for the blessings uh, that you provide for us each and every day. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for guiding us. And thank you for bringing the children into this church. And we pray that you will watch over them and protect them. In your most glorious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done. Someone who told me this morning, and unfortunately, I cannot remember names. <laughs> but I remember the person that the NAL members here, and he is having a very severe neck surgery coming up in the in this congregation. Neck surgery in order to straighten that neck. I've, I've known one of my best friends who had that situation, and it was extremely.
treasure in your kingdom's work. We remember how you sent your son into the world, how he was born in a manger in Bethlehem, how he grew up in a carpenter's shop in Nazareth, how he taught and blessed the people as he met them by the sea, and how he called disciples to follow him. We're grateful that we in turn have been called to follow him today. Walk with us, dear God, in our discipleship as we consider the many gifts you've given each one of us and how we might use them in service. May our treasure truly be where our hearts are, for our hearts are with Christ. We love Jesus and we want to serve in his name. So help us, dear God, to respond to your love and your blessings in our lives by giving the very best that we have to you. May your kingdom come, even as we work for it, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. That was so nice. A man told me not long ago that he had all his bills paid. He said on uh, the previous Friday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, he had everything that he knew about paid. For 20 years, he'd made his mortgage payment. And now that home was all his. For 72 months, he'd paid on that 2014 automobile. And now that little car was all his. It was paid for. To the best of his knowledge, he had everything paid. He didn't owe anything. And yet, do you know what he told me? That really, he said it was a strange and lonely feeling not to owe anybody anything. In fact, he couldn't stand it. And do you know what he did? He went out and bought himself a new suit of clothes and he put it on his MasterCard <laughs> just so he would be holden once again. Now, this man didn't say so, but I suspect that the sense of his discontent was an awareness that really we're never in even balance with the world around us. For you see, it might be a very satisfying thing to think that we have everything paid off. And yet it's very deceptive because Maybe we don't own anything, owe anything to any bank or loan company or anyone else. But still, still, we are not out of debt. Every one of us is a debtor. We were born that way and we will die that way. Someone has noticed that every person, <clears throat> from the moment that person was born, owes someone for nine months of room and board. <laughs> huh? And this same thing is true of all of us all our lives. For no person, regardless of his wealth or circumstance, ever gets to the point of being out of debt. The ancient psalmist recognized this, and so he wrote there in the 116th Psalm. Now I'm reading it according to the King James Version, Rudy. How shall I repay the Lord? for all his bounty to me. That's what he said. And I think it's a good question for us to ask. I think it's time for us to realize that we can never, ever fully repay God for all of God's gifts. To us, there's no way we could ever balance the books. There's an old hymn that I love, and it goes this way. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. That's the way it is. Have you ever considered for a moment how dependent we are 
on God and on the others around us? A couple of things come to my mind. Several years ago, Barbara and I were invited out to far west Texas to the Davis Mountains, to the McDonald Observatory. And there we got to go in that observatory and climb the steps and on a very beautiful clear night we were able to look through that telescope, that 84 inch telescope. It was amazing. We saw some of the beautiful planets of our solar system. We saw some of the stars of this universe. And as I stood there taking it all in, I couldn't help but have the psalm flash through my mind. The heavens declare the glory of God. And you know what? I got to thinking, it doesn't matter what happens to me or what I do or don't do, the heavens are going to go on flashing the glory of God. That was a beautiful thing, a gift to Curtis and Barbara to enjoy that night sky. Or think about another item with me. I remember one time when our youngest son, Kurt, was ill. He had contacted some kind of a virus and it had a hold of him. He was just a little baby. And it was about to take his life. He was coughing and sputtering. He had a high fever. We didn't know what to do as young parents. We finally took him to the hospital. What's going on? Rain. It's rain. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Let's sit here and listen to the rain. <laughs> we need it. choking and coughing and he dehydrated we ran to the hospital called the doctor the doctor met us there and he was taking care of him and you know we had to have that sense of utter helplessness that parents have when they have a sick child and yet all that was alleviated by knowing that we were in the hospital and and that the doctor was there and that even now the antibiotics were coursing through his veins and slowly but surely our child was getting better. But you know what? <laughs> That's good. A few months before I had read the story of a couple that had come out west on the prairie in the 1840s and settled on the frontier and made their home there. And then they found in different years of their lives, three of their children had their lives taken by what they call the consumption. And there was nothing they could do about it. And having read that and standing there with Barbara thinking about our sick child, I wondered what in the world I had done to take care of my child with an illness that a hundred years before would have snuffed out his life. I didn't invent penicillin. 
I didn't discover any of the antibiotics. I didn't have the medical knowledge to put them to use. All this I owed to other persons. I was a debtor. We all are debtors. There's no question about that. What we have, we have received. But there's a big danger here that we won't see this truth that sometimes we're going to be really tempted to maintain that we've done it all, that we've had the education, that, that we've worked hard, that we've struggled, and now we've planned and plotted. And, and sometimes we get to thinking that way, that we've done it all. But this ancient psalm puts the story straight, calls on us to focus on the source of all goodness. How can I repay the Lord for all his bounty to me? The Bible warns us of the danger of plenty. Anytime a person is well fed and well clothed and well housed and well healed, I think there's always a danger that we might have that tendency to lean back and say, Oh, I have done it all. I've made it happen. Look what I've accomplished. But we forget. We forget. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Or if they don't come from God, these blessings come from the work of other people. You know, we had our wonderful place out in Colorado for so many years, and driving to and from Colorado, from Texas, you have to go across the old Santa Fe Trail. And sometimes you drive along part of it. And there I was on a good summer day, driving on a beautiful highway, 65 miles an hour, driving a beautiful car, going to the mountains, and along the old Santa Fe Trail, it didn't take much of an imagination to remember covered wagons coming out along that trail, inching up the rocky hillsides, trying to find water, trying to make their way, their passage to Santa Fe. You see, what they did the hard way, I got to do the easy way. Because they'd done it in covered wagons, they'd blaze the trail. And I got to drive my car so comfortably through the mountains. Their sacrifice, their courage, their vision. I was a debtor, for all that was a gift to me. You and I simply have to understand that we are receivers rather than givers, creatures rather than creators. Here's the one question about Christian stewardship, about our giving that is so important that if we don't get the answer right here, then we're never going to get any of the other answers right either. That beautiful place that Barbara and I had in the mountains, so great. That wonderful place where we live now, so wonderful, so good. The cars, the fly rods, all of that good stuff. Where did it come from? Why 
Why would I not understand that I am partnering with God when I give back to God's work? That I'm a son of God, a partner with God in his work as I give. Why give? Why give in the first place? Three things come to mind for Curtis. Now this is for Curtis. It's what motivates me to be a giver. Number one, because I awakened this morning and lying there in a comfortable bed, I took a deep breath and I reached over there and beside me was this person who shared her whole life with me. And I went and opened the door and it was an incredible day out there. All this I was given. I didn't create the air I breathe. I didn't make Barbara's life. I didn't, I, I didn't create the wonderful rain and the sun and all this that comes to us from God's hands. It's a gift, incredible gift from God. I give because 150 years ago, there were people coming into this part of the country, pioneers. They came in covered wagons. They came and settled along the river and along the creeks and they built little log cabins and they eked out a living there as they established themselves. And they built churches. They began to build churches. They did all this and they made it possible at great sacrifice. But they had a heart to serve God. So they even built this church. I didn't do anything to create Kerrville or Fredericksburg. I'm a, I'm a recipient of all that. I didn't do anything to build this church. It's just a given because others before me sacrificed and gave. And that makes my heart want to give. And I'll tell you something else. Another reason I give, because on a hill just outside the city of Jerusalem, there was a cross. And on that cross, a dear son of God was crucified for my sins that I might have my sins forgiven for my life that I might have eternal life God did his best hands down his best and he gave me all that a free gift for me to receive and enjoy and love. It makes me want to respond with all my heart to God. The psalmist asked the question. It's a good question. What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty? To me, how can I repay the Lord 
for all his gifts to me. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. Oh my, we thank you with all our hearts for every gift, praising you, rejoicing in your love, enjoying your creation. We hallow every gift and we thank you and we pray that you will give us this one thing more. Truly grateful and generous hearts. Amen.
morning. As I was rummaging through my office this morning, and I mean rummaging, I discovered a Bible that had been presented to my mother in 1969. I had been out of school three years and began to reflect on that period of my life. And as she never gave up on me, despite all my disobedience, she continued to believe in me and to believe that I would survive, if you will. <laughs> as I skimmed through the Bible, I came across some verses that I thought applied to what we're going about to do. And I, you'll be familiar with them, and I'd like to read them to you. It comes from Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, no height, nor depth, nor anything created shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I suppose that Jesus knew that his disciples that night needed to be reminded and reassured that nothing would separate him from them, even his own death. So, on that night, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, now take a bite of this, for this is a symbol of my body, which will be broken for you. And then he took the cup, and after he blessed it, he said, drink of this, for this is a symbol of my blood, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as your disciples come, we too come this morning, constantly yearning for reassurance constantly reminding ourselves that there is nothing, nothing, even the death of your Son, Jesus, that can separate us from you and your love. And to remind us of this, we recite the verses that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Wednesday, I received uh, some visitors. Actually, I received those visitors every Wednesday. There are four little girls. They come with their mother. And they come bearing gifts. Let me give you a few examples. Interesting enough, one of the first ones I received says, I love you, Riley. Love him. May the Lord be with you, and he will never leave you. I have a picture, a self-portrait from Debbie. It says, Wiley, I love you. Another picture, Mr. Wiley, love E. This has been going on for some time. At one time, there were only two. But over the years, two sisters have been added. What's the motive for them bringing them? 
You know, I found there's many synonyms for the word gift. I think the only one God cares about is love. Amen. We have an opportunity, as these little girls had for me, to express your love for God through the tithes and offerings. with you. 